Hey everybody, how are you today? Mike Mackniak here. Really pleased that you've joined me here in sunny Florida uh, for, um, believe it or not, our sixth or seventh, seventh, I think, um, get together. Uh, this Ask Me Anything open office hours. As always, I start off with sort of my thoughts for the week, uh, sort of a lesson for the week, if you will, um, things we're talking about, and then I turn it over to questions from any of you who have maybe mailed me questions or uh, are live with me, listening with me, and uh, are interested in having questions answered about their particular situation, their particular loved one. Um, the first part of this uh, bi-weekly um, talk is recorded, the second is not, et cetera, et cetera. So I say the same things pretty much every week just to, for new people who are coming on board and have not uh, been part of this before. So this week is sort of a, a summary, if you will, or a, sort of a culmination of everything we've been talking about to this point, where we've been talking about our focus and our clarity and our courage and our influence in the world. Um, and, and sort of our energy and how we present ourselves to the world every single day. And today is sort of, like I said, it's sort of a summary of all that because all of those things that I just talked about and all the things that we've talked about from the beginning till now really depend heavily on what? They depend heavily on your psyche, on your psychology, on your makeup, where you are in the world, how you present to the world. Uh, it's, it's, it's vitally important um, that we uh, think about that and take into consideration everything that we've worked on to this point. And now we're going we're gonna to put it all together, wrap a bow on it, and then we're going to take it to the next level, which is even mastering all the things we've talked about to this point. So when I talk about psychology, I want to know how you think, how you feel, how you interact in the world. Are you jumping in with both feet when you get out of bed in the morning? Um, are we able to focus, as I said before? Are we able to be courageous every day? It's huge, it's huge because it begins to get much deeper after this, right? We wanna hit the world running. We wanna bring our own level of zeal, energy, fire to the world and put some kind of uh, joy, if you will, back into our lives again, right? So I wanna know, are you feeling like you're performing at your optimal level? Are you performing higher on a day in day out basis than most of your friends or your peers or your coworkers? Or do you feel like you're just sort of going through the motions? Because if you're going through the motions and you don't care about performing at a higher level, then you're not, performing at a high level of energy, of psychology, and we need to up that game. So I really want you to gauge yourself as always, give yourself a rating on some things from a scale of one to 10, um, and think about how you present to the world and how you compare yourself to others. Now, again, I'm not big on scales because we can always, I mean, count comparison scales because you know, you could ask a millionaire if he's rich and he'll say, compared to who, right? But compare yourself. Think about how you present as, as opposed to the way your other peers and friends and, and, and associates may be presenting to the world. And, and the first thing I want to think of you to think about is, and this is going to be impactful for many of you who listen to, to my podcast and my blogcast, what level of anxiety do you feel every single day? What level do you feel anxiety around change? What level do you feel uh, anxiety around performance? Um, you know, your thoughts, your emotions, are they running you or are you running them? Right? Are, they, are your thoughts and emotions putting, putting their will on you? You know, worry, stress, we call it, but worry is a huge time suck. It's a waste of time. It's debilitating for some people. This perseverative attitude, this perseverative way we go about thinking and thinking and thinking about something that we're worried about. And I remember as a little kid, I used to have a problem where I would 
every single night I had racing thoughts, perseverate, perseverate, perseverate. My father would come and say, you're going to give yourself an ulcer. I didn't know what an ulcer was, um, but apparently worrying can cause an ulcer. I don't, who knew? Um, but I had that when I was a little kid. And it, like you said, it's just a time suck. It's a waste of time. It shows that if you're constantly worried and constantly anxious, it may be because there's something that you're not competent or capable in that you're not tackling. You're, you're, you're sitting there worrying about it rather than addressing it, tackling it, getting on top of it. You know, we need to be willing to really jump in and, and take life challenges by the throat and wrestle them to the ground. And if we're not willing to do that, that's where our anxiety comes in. And this requires work. It requires work for every single person, every single person, every single day. So we want to get perspective on this. We want to get uh, practiced on making sure that we're really controlling our anxiety, our worry, our perseverativeness. Pers I don't even know what the right word is, but um, the way we, we ruminate, right? And this is a habit that you can work on and it can help you to be more productive. Remember, we talked about productivity. It can help you to be more productive and therefore alleviate some of your angst and your worry and your anxieties. Okay, so give, give yourself a, 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 a one to 10 rating on that. And along the same lines, the next thing I wanna to talk to you about is the idea of flexibility. Are you one of these people that walks into a room and says, I have a fixed mindset, or I'm not gonna change, this is me, what you see is what you get, um, everything I'm doing is either perfect or I know it's not perfect, but I ain't willing to change. Um, will you go off the rails? Will you become angry when your per per particular plan isn't going the way you thought it should or would or could? Um, you know, how much are you willing to pivot? How much are you willing to go with the flow and adapt and adjust? Um, or do you have fixed beliefs about yourself? Do you have fixed beliefs about others? Oh, she'll never do this. Oh, he'll never do that. Or I can't do this. Or I won't do that. Because if you do, you're not going to be able to get yourself to a high performing level. You need to have openness. And this is a real important measure because it's your openness and your willingness to be open is something that every single psychologist, every single clinician looks at and will put together a profile of you. And that goes to your adaptability, your flexibility. Think about for a second what your lack of flexibility may cost you. For some people, it's really serious. I mean, it may cost you your career. It may cost you your relationship. It may cost you your job. Um, it may cost you your marriage. Um, so you really need to understand your level of flexibility. And I'd love for you to give yourself a rating on that as well. And this is a big one, folks. What level of happiness do you feel? This is obviously a completely self-measured concept. I can't do it, it's completely subjective. But what level of happiness do you feel? What connection of joy do you have? Pride in what you're doing? Are you satisfied with where you are right now in life? Um, do you have connectivity with other people? Do you feel connected and do you feel um, in, in connection? And I'm completely forgetting the word and I use it all the time, but do you, do you feel that you are in line with your core beliefs and, and what makes you tick and who you are. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm forgetting the word. I'm sure all of you are think, saying, screaming it at the, at the computer screen right now because I use it all the time. I'm having a, a mind blank here. Anyway, all right, the last topic that I want you to rate yourself on is your degree of momentum. What about your passions? What about the commitments you've made? What about your action and your energy? We've talked about those things before, right? Is there something that's preventing you from being in momentum, getting in action? As I said earlier, and I say all the time, part of feeling like we are accomplishing things is just a simple act of getting in action. You know, I say all the time, or I have adopted saying all the time that, you know, it's better, better done than perfect. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get into action and get something done, like shooting this video, um, as opposed to worrying about whether or not I don't know, the lighting is exactly right or the time of day is exactly right. 
because I want something done. I want to be in action. I want to feel like I created something for you guys. And it gives me a sense of accomplishment. Um, for those of you who don't get in action because you allow things to uh, hold you back, is that impacting your what? Your happiness, like we just talked about? What does it impact when you're not feeling that momentum? Okay, so if you've rated yourself on those four things, um, you know, give yourself a score. And as, as, as always, I want you to look at the score and say, okay, why did I give myself that, that score? What can I do to improve that score? And I'm going to give you a few tips of things that I think that you can absolutely do to improve your score in this, in this psychology discussion. The first thing, and this goes with everything we talk about basically every single week, is be conscious of the way that you're thinking. You know, somebody said to me one time, and this goes back to, to, this has been eons people have been saying this. When you believe it, you will see it. It's not the other way around. We used to, we used to say sarcastically or ironically, you know, oh yeah, I'll believe it when I see it. No, when you believe it, you will see it. We have a, a remarkable capability as human beings to manifest what we see, what we want. Um, what we believe to be truly who we are. Um, we could think about this concept in terms of jumpstarting the way we think. Um, for instance, I know that uh, um, Brendan Burchard, who is one of the great, not only motivational speakers, but a great marketer, a great, um, uh, just he's, he's just one of my mentors. I know him on a personal level, and he is one of the world leading, um, you know, experts in the field of high performance. In fact, I am a Brendan Burchard certified high performance coach, and um, the materials that I use come from Brendan. And with my own little spin on it, particularly in, in the work that I do with folks who are struggling to fight against mental illness in their family or with a loved one, etc. But one of the things that Brendan talks about is. He, one of his check-ins is a trigger and he uses the threshold of a doorway as a trigger for him. He also uses lines at the grocery store as a trigger for him. It's a good time for you to check your, check it or wreck it, right? Check yourself at the door and say, wow, how am I going to approach it when I walk into this room? What's my attitude going to be when I go into this meeting or I'm standing here in this grocery line and all these people around me are really annoying me or this person's making me happy or this tabloid rag is got me curious you know check your thoughts what are you thinking about if you can just find one or two things that that daily you do well, i mean we all like uh wash the dishes we all grab a paper towel i use paper towels all the time anyway um what what do you do and, and can that be a trigger for you to say hey you know what let me just check in with myself quick figure out how i'm feeling figure out how to fix it or, or to embrace it and acknowledge it and, and have fun with the way I'm thinking. Then I want you to think about these four factors, okay? What cues are you giving other people regarding your thoughts in the moment? What cues do you take from other people? What kind of signs, right? With regard to conditioning, are you stuck in your old routines and and afraid to break out of them? Are you reluctant to break out of them for whatever reason? And when you think about that question, it leads you to consequences. Are you afraid of the pain of breaking out of your old habits? Or are there positive consequences in every action that we take that you can really rely on to help you get motivated to, to get into action and change? And with that regard, you know, again, within that regard, it's like, okay, I have a choice. You can make a choice, and who do you want to be right now? You have intentionality. You have will. You have free will. And this is beyond pleasure and pain. This goes more to meaning, what we mean, congruence. That's the word I was looking for. How congruent are we with our own personality, right? <laughs> Here's the dog. <laughs> um, Okay, so then I want to talk to you about um, 
another thing that you should focus on or can focus on to help you really up your game with regard to your psychology. And that is to really create some transition time. Uh, this is particularly true with work. Um, you know, you got to save your own sanity. You know, I just came out of a real tough meeting. Now I'm going to go into an interview with somebody or, you know, I just came out of a real stressful situation and now I'm going to be expected to be um, empathetic or sympathetic to somebody. No, you need to have transition time. Give yourself even if it's just 10 minutes, sit down, get in a chair. Uh, some of you meditate, some of you exercise, some of you bounce around, some of you just do some flexing and moving and whatnot. Give yourself the opportunity to have transition time to get your thoughts back in focus, to get your psychology back where it needs to be so that you could be functioning on a high level and bring that A game to every situation that you face during the course of a day, a week, a year, a month, Sorry, I get the puppy out here. He's starting to bark at somebody or something. Okay, and then the final thing that I want to talk to you about today is your psychological reality. And we talked about this a little bit already. This is what you do in terms of your choice of who you are right now, who you are in any single given moment. Again, this goes to thinking about your triggers. This goes to thinking about the way you perceive other people or you are uh, being perceived by other people. But your psychological reality is very important to be in touch with. Brendan Burchard, again, says that every single situation needs patience and joy. So in every single situation that you're gonna walk into, you need to think about how you can bring patience to it and calmly interact with other people without being frustrated with them and with yourself maybe. And it also requires that you bring happiness to every single situation. When, it, when, when, when I talk about patience, I mean, are you being open? Are you listening intently, actively listening? Are you waiting before you respond? Are you calm rather than reactive and flying off the handle? So those psychological results, the psychological reality of where you are, the, um, again, I think these are somewhat interrelated because you have to be very introspective. You have to uh, be conscious of your thoughts in order to understand your psychological reality. And then you have to be able to be willing to train yourself to change that psychological reality. And that causes you to get back into momentum, maybe feel happier, right? Maybe get back to feeling that you're less anxious and you actually got some momentum and, and you're in action like we talked about. So folks, you know, None of the, everybody's in a different place with all the stuff that I talk about, you know, week to week. Everybody's in a different spot. Some people need better, more help with some things. Some people need less help with others. We all need help. We all need to feel that we're 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 moving forward and that we're on the on an upward trajectory. Otherwise, what's the point in doing anything, right? So these lessons and these topics that I discuss with you every other week are really important to, for you to keep in mind and to think about from week to week, and they build upon each other. And psychology and your perception of you is really the building point, like the starting point. I, it's funny because I think about psychology in, in this introspection thing, and then I also think, well, all the way back to week number one, we talked about focus and clarity. And so all this stuff is so interrelated. And I mean, you know, we, we are just like a big giant onion and we have to peel off those layers. So we try to break them down into segments that can make sense. Oh, I apologize. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this seg segment and I will be getting back to you in another couple of weeks. Thanks for being here.